And welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we have done all the setup that we need in order to build our edit feature. In this one, we're gonna build the edit form. And finally, we're gonna build the edit feature. Code with Sloba. Let's continue where we left off in the previous video. So here I have an edit form opened up from our components. Let me close the Explorer. And here we have the access to our task. Now I want to extract all the properties that we have inside of this task. So I want to access the ID, content, and complete it. And we want to access that from the task. So we are destructuring our task object. Next, we want to build a form and provide inputs for all of these three properties. So instead of this div, let's create a form. And once we submit this form, we want to call the action that we created in the previous tutorial and we call it as get edit task. And actually, I think this naming is not the right. So let's go to get edit task and let's rename this one to edit task because we want to edit task once we complete the editing. So let's head over here and let's rename this one to edit task like this and make sure to correct the import if you have imported like this. Now inside this form, let's create our input fields. But before we do that, let's add some styles to our form. So let's add a class name. And here, let's add a maximum width of small. So I want this form to be small. Let's add some padding uh, around it. So 12, let's add a border. And let's add border dash base dash 300. So this is the color. And let's make it as rounded dash MD like this. Now let's add our input fields. So the first input field is gonna be for the ID. And this one is gonna be hidden because we just want to access the value from this ID, but we don't wanna show this to the user because user is not able to edit this. So let's make a type of hidden. Let's add a name of ID so that we can access this from browser API. And let's add a value of ID and let's close this input. Now let's create second input. The second input is gonna be a type of text and this is gonna be name content. So for the second property, and let's add the default value, the one that we already have. So content like this, and let's add required property. So this is required in order to submit our form. And let's add a class name and it can be input, input dash bordered. So these are classes from Daisy UI. And let's add a width to be full like this. And let's close it like this. And let's see what we have in our form. So if we go to our page, we can see that we have this by banana. If you refresh, this is the input field that we have. But actually I see that we don't have any separation between the button and the form. So let's fix this. So if we open up our single task page, here we can see that actually this edit form is inside of this div. So this is why we don't have this margin bottom being applied. So let's add React Fragments and move it outside like this. And let's now include this div inside of this React Fragments because we need to return only one value. And now we can move this edit form outside of this. So let's cut this and let's paste it here. Now let's save this one and we can close this page. We don't need it anymore, but let's see what we have in our browser. And now we have this margin bottom from this back button and this is uh, being nicely separated. Okay, so let's add additional fields. The next field that I wanna create is going to be a checkbox. So what I wanted to do is I want to add a div because we're gonna have multiple items inside. So we're gonna have the label, we're gonna have the span, and we're gonna have the input. So let's add a class to surround all of that class name and it's gonna be form control like this. And let's add some margin on top and on the bottom so that we have separation between this input and we're gonna have the button below this one. Okay, inside of this div, let's add our label. So this is gonna be a surrounding label and let's add a class name for this label and let's name this class as label and cursor pointer dash pointer, okay? And inside of our label, we wanna have a span and this is gonna be the text. And once the user clicks on this text, we want to check the checkbox. But in order to do that, we need to provide HTML4 and we want to do that for completed input. Just make sure to spell it correctly, it's completed like this. Okay, and now inside of our label, let's create a span. And here we're gonna create our text. So completed like this, and let's add a class so that we style it a little bit better as label dash text. And below this span, let's add our input. And this is gonna be a checkbox input. So for the type, we're gonna say checkbox. And for the default value, default check, we're gonna set completed. So what is already being saved in the Prisma, okay? Now for the ID, we need completed so that we are able to click it. Uh, once we click on this label, this needs to match the ID of the component. Then we need to provide a name. So name is gonna be completed as well. And let's add some classes. So it looks a little bit better. So let's add checkbox dash primary. And then let's add checkbox, just a checkbox. And let's add checkbox small, box dash SM like this. 
And let's save this and let's see what we have in our browser. So if I open up, we can see that we have this input field and we have this completed text and we can toggle it. Okay, let's add a button. So after our div here, we can add a button and this is gonna be a submit button. So let's add a type equals submit like this. Let's add a class name and for the class name, we can say button, button dash primary and we can say button dash block and button dash sm. So this will take the entire width of our form and it's gonna be small. And here, let's just say edit like this. Let's save this and let's see how our button looks like. And this is exactly how I want it. Now let's take all the values that we have from input field and go and update the Prisma. So let's open our actions file. And here in our edit task action, let's first destructure what we have from the form data. So first let's access the ID and how we access is form data dot get. And we provide the name of the input. In this case, it's ID and we can copy paste this couple more times and we can update the second one it can be content let's copy this one and let's place it here and the last one is completed let's copy paste it as well here and now we have the values of all three input fields and we can update our prisma so let's await for prisma and we want to access our task table and we want to call update function so and inside of our update function as we discussed previously we want to provide where where we match the id of the record and once we have that record we want to update the data so data and here we provide an object and update the fields that we want so we can update the content and the second one is completed but we need to check if completed is equal to on if it is then mark it as completed if it isn't mark it as false let's save this and let's actually before we test this once we have updated the task what we want to do is we want to redirect our users to our to-do list page so let's add a redirect and make sure to import it from navigation next for slash navigation and here let's say just for slash to do dash list like this let's save this and let's see now what we have in our browser so let's head over to our to-do list so let's refresh our page and let's say that we want to update this by banana if we click on edit let's say that we want to say hey this task has been completed and let's click on edit we can see we get redirected to our to-do list and this by banana has been struck through like it's being completed right and let's say that we want to update this buy milk and we don't want to buy milk let's say that we want to buy coffee like this and let's edit this one and we can see that both content and completed property have been updated and this is all for this tutorial in the following videos we will see how we can improve user experience and if you want to support my channel and get a full source code of every single video that i'm doing feel free to check out patreon.com code with sloba to get full access see you there well, that's all for this video. And thanks for stopping by. And don't forget to subscribe. Code with Sloba. Thank you for watching the entire video. To see more videos like this, click here.